All right, so I wanted to do another video today to talk about using uh, the new M1 Max for, for development and uh, specifically around Docker and uh, why you're probably not going to want to use Docker on the new M1s. Uh, the primary reason right now is it just doesn't work. Uh, the reason for that is because the underlying technology that Docker is based off of is actually, it's, it's all written in Golang. And Golang uh, has become a very popular programming language, but the compiler for it uh, is actually based off of uh, GCC, which is not expected to be ported to the new Apple Silicon-based M1 style processors until I think February of, uh, of next year. And as of today, today's date is December 1st, uh, 2020. So that being said, at some point, they're gonna have that fixed. So you'll be able to run Docker uh, on the new uh, ARM-based, ARM64-based Macs. And the way that's going to work is that they have a technology that's actually called uh, BuildX. And BuildX, what it'll let you do is they'll let you kind of compile or build your Docker images for more than one processor or architecture at a time. So, for instance, if you wanted to do, uh, you know, x86, uh, ARM7, ARM64, you can specify that in your uh, in your Docker um, uh, definition file or the Docker file, and uh, there's some right now it's kind of experimental, uh, but you can actually uh, download this and and uh, start playing around with this uh, today on Intel-based machines. So you have to have uh, one of these, not one of the the newer uh, uh, ARM or Apple Silicon-based Macs. So that being said, I wanted to kind of go through and show some stuff that I think you might find interesting as well. I'll put the links to this up uh, in the description here for this uh, YouTube video. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Medium post I saw from this uh, guy, Eric Ingham, and it does a really good job of describing why the, the new M1 uh, processors are so fast compared to the Intel counterparts. And he goes into a really good uh, description of talking about RISC versus CISC, as well as, you know, um, the whole layout of the way that the registers work and uh, the way things um, are set up so that uh, when it's going to run uh, sp specific instructions and stuff like that, it actually will go through and it will uh, kind of gather those in a more efficient way than it would be on our traditional uh, x86-based processor from Intel or AMD. It's an excellent, excellent uh, post. I recommend anybody that's interested in these newer processors and stuff uh, should read this. Uh, but that being said, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, Docker. And Docker, they had a post that came out, I think around the same day that the new uh, M1 Macs were released. And then they basically talk about uh, you know the challenges they have as far as getting this uh, uh, getting this done and stuff like that. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video today is because uh, there's a video, or actually uh, at WWC, one thing they did is they, they talked about uh, Docker, and so uh, I wanted to play this clip for you. We're also introducing new virtualization technologies in macOS Big Sur. So for developers who want to run other environments like Linux or tools like Docker, we have you covered. When you so now you've seen that clip. Uh, the thing I thought was interesting about that is uh, they kind of made it sound like, oh, okay, you know, this is all going to be taken care of and running and stuff like that. And they didn't really go into details about how Docker was going to work on, on the Mac. And I think that's one of the things that... Uh, uh, I wanted to kind of talk about was when you're, you know, when you're choosing a uh, laptop that you want to develop on, um, I think it's kind of important that, you know, the processor technology that you're targeting is going to be the processor technology uh, that you're actually deploying to. And you should probably try to develop on the same type of processor. So for instance, if all of the CPUs that you're, uh, you know, you're deploying to are all, you know, x86-based CPUs. Does it really make sense to try to do the development on an Intel-based uh, laptop? And uh, even with this multiple architecture uh, thing that uh, Docker's rolling out, uh, I'm a firm believer that you should develop on the same type of hardware 
that you're going to be deploying to or you're targeting. And one of the things that's really cool about Go is that, you know, you can kind of like, you can t do multiple targets at the same time. And a lot of the newer uh, uh, compilers and stuff like that have that option where you can actually do that. In fact, Apple is doing that now with uh, uh, Apple Silicon so that you can actually build uh, universal binaries that run on Intel-based processors as well as the Apple Silicon-based processors. Um, but I think uh, at some point this is going to change, and I'm not sure how many years in the future this is going to is going to is going to happen. But I think eventually what's going to start happening is that uh, even in the cloud, when you're deploying to AWS and Azure or, or uh, you know Google's offering, uh, I think one of the things they're going to start doing is uh, it's going to start becoming a lot more popular to deploy to ARM64 based processors. And so if you go to uh, Amazon, uh, they have a page up here on, uh, on a, an A1 instance on their EC2. And this is the first, um, I think this is the first type of uh, ARM-based machines that they've, they've allowed people to deploy to. And what's interesting about this is that this is also an ARM64-based processor. It's a completely different processor than what Apple's developed but it's still using that ARM64 based instruction set. So in theory, you know, it should be possible to, you know, kind of build on this type of hardware and uh, then deploy into instances like this. And the advantage right now of using a processor like this, because ARM is a lot more power efficient than Intel based processors, that actually winds up reducing the cost. Because if you look at what you pay for when you use cloud based services, uh, you know, they're looking at, you know, the number of CPU cycles that you're using, how much power you're using, uh, all that adds into the cost. And so what this has done is this has given developers a lower cost option. And it's also one of the reasons why Apple chose uh, to go this route with their new processors because they use a lot less power. And if you're trying to make something like a laptop like this and you don't want it to die after about two hours of use, uh, you want to be able to use uh, this type of uh, processor technology. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, you know, give me a thumbs down, but really just give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, please uh, hit subscribe, and I'm going to do some more videos like this. Um, but that's kind of what I really wanted to talk about, is just kind of talk about, you know, if you're going to be developing for Docker, uh, I think you still want to kind of make sure that you're developing on the same type of machine that you're going to be deploying to. And with that, I hope everybody has a nice evening. Thanks.